thank you all for this opportunity. Um, I will be sharing with you a discussion around instilling Dev DevOps in large organizations. It's the ways of working that uh, the culture is transformed. But first, I want to say it's not an overnight, quick fix thing. It does take time. Did it move? There it goes. Um, first, I'm Chris Sills. Um, I have spent the last 14 years doing delivery transformation. Um, 13 of those years were at Capital One. I had the opportunity there to lead initiatives in the commercial bank space, um, agile transformation, the decentralization of quality engineering, as well as um, continuous testing through ATDD. And then finally, uh, I worked with the cloud migration strategy. Um, last year, I had the opportunity to join a small company called Liatrio. And our company goes around the, the United States to clients that are larger enterprises to help them with their transformation. So today, I'm going to share with you a little bit about organizational transformation. And one of the things that's probably good to know about me is I have a passion for change. And I love to help people navigate through change. So today, most industries are being asked to deliver fast, exceed customer expectations, and deliver high quality. The marketplace is very competitive, and technology companies must be prepared to deliver fast. Uh, in order to stay in competition, organizations have to become leaner and be more flexible. In order to do that, I believe there has to be transformation that occurs at the individual level, the team level, leaders, and across the organization. <clears throat> this requires companies and teams to have to consider how to deliver products into their customer hands um, more frequently and as soon as possible. So I'm going to propose to you some uh, practices and, pr and methodologies that you can put into place. Alrighty, um, one of the things that I like to talk through is you want to kind of get over there. And over there to me is in order to get there faster, you need to be able to get code into production as soon as possible. One of the mantras that I've seen a lot at the, my latest client is to do one code deploy per day per developer into production. And for large enterprises, that seems ridiculous. It really is uh, not the, the simplest thing to do. But to start with, I know that I see opportunities and how to make that happen. This is working. One of the things that uh, we propose is to uplift the culture um, and streamline the processes and deliver using a pipeline. But let me state one quick thing. Uh, you have to start somewhere. It may not seem feasible to go with one code deployed to production per day. But instead, let me propose that you could go to one code deploy to test or to dev per day. And I'm going to go over a couple of definitions and um, some processes that we propose that can help you. So if customers are looking to get their products in faster, and, we, and I'm proposing something ridiculous, or may seem ridiculous, to get to production every single day, Honestly, transformation isn't easy when you're talking about a larger corporation. Some of the common traps that you'll see, excuse me, um, are that there's this top-down mandate. Let's get, um, let's let's do this with agile. There's also this thinking that it's a one-size-fits-all, but in large organizations, it's not a one-size-fits-all. Every team, 
every application potentially needs a specialized solution. And also leaders, their behavior may not, um, may not be the right behavior. They're very power influenced. And unless the leadership makes a change, it's hard for the co organization to change. And another trap that I see is everyone thinks it's the tools. But I'm going to propose you really have to start with the trans transformation with the culture shift. So what makes large enterprises uh, different and what makes them um, more complex and painful is I'm going to outline about eight things. There's silos within the organization. Everything is separate. Uh, you typically have to pass something off to someone else, so there's waste and wait time. The, a lot of the work is manual. You'll build the environments, you'll test manual, and you'll release in a manual way. Another one is around large batch. Today, you may take and deliver work in large releases. You'll sprint over time and eventually deliver something to production. And most likely, it breaks something. It's not necessarily what the customer really wanted. And was that fast? Was that at the speed that they really wanted to accomplish it? Another thing is visibility. Um, today, we use a lot of tools to keep work visible. Maybe you're using spreadsheets or JIRA or version one for stories. Maybe there's tons of emails that are going back and forth, but all of that can be changed when you're delivering in a more smooth and um, con concise way. So transformation has to be holistic. I put culture first here on purpose. One of the methodologies that I like about DevOps is people over process over tools. You have to start with the people. One of the things you need to do is improve their skill sets, uplift them, give them an environment that supports the change that they want to see. You have to give leaders the tools and the information to make it successful. The operating models and the practices, those become transformed when the mindset and the practices are, are consumed. Another part of the organizational change is you have to try something a little bit different. I saw different things at Capital One. I saw product owners joining the IT side. I saw BS, BSAs moving from IT into product owner roles. So you end up blending the organization and you create the culture that you're looking for. You need to modernize practices. But let me tell you, enterprise transformation is ongoing. You're going to do things, you're going to learn, you're going to get fast feedback. And one of the things I want to really encourage, it's not a program that has an end date. Things are always changing. And so be ready to uh, elicit that change. But it requires that the foundation that leads you in the right direction, let's start with some definitions. All right, the first, so I'm gonna break down the title of my talk. So let's start with instill. So Webster tells us that it still means to gradually yet firmly establish an idea, attitude, or especially a desired one while forming an expected outcome. So one of the things that makes culture transformation truly incur is when you instill it and you make it firm. One of the things that we teach is behavior-driven development and small batch as well as delivering with the pipeline. So the first thing I want to hit on is one way to instill is to really break the work down and get it small. Get the ticket so that it can move through the board faster. What if you could get a ticket to move through the board in four hours? What if you could get a sprint that works in one day? 
those things, break it down and get it small enough so that you can deliver faster. The second one I'm gonna give you is culture. This is kind of my definition. It's our dynamic shared qualities transmitted from person to person and lived it to its fullest in every way. Transformation occurs when you get that ripple effect, when you can move the process from person to person. Um, so within the work that we do, we highly encourage three Amigo grooming. The reason for that is when you create that close collaborative culture and you're getting your ticket small enough so that you can deliver it, the work becomes meaningful to the customer. And the business is one of those three amigos. So you need business buy-in, and one of the ways to do that is to help them see the small batch and working in close collaboration will get them the results. And lastly, I'm gonna talk about transform. And transform is a thorough or dramatic change in the form, appearance, or character of. So when you take and create something that's firm and it's, it's kind of strong and drilled into the attitudes and the behaviors of the work that you're delivering, and you make it dynamic because you're working with other people and you can actually transform. It can become dramatic. So I, I mentioned earlier, transformation is at the individual, the team, the leaders, and the organization. And that's one of the things that you'll see when you get to closer collaboration. So I'm going to assume everybody here already knows what DevOps is, but I'm going to propose something here. It's not the magic that happens when Dev and Ops comes together. It requires the culture and the organization shift. It's not a team. So it's not a team, it's not a separate team that works. And so lastly, it's a culture. I'm gonna propose that DevOps is a culture. It's a way of life. It's the ways you work. So let's touch on some of those things that a developer would need to do in order to get one code deployed to production per day. And maybe that is even to dev. The culture has to transform. And like I mentioned, in order to be fast, you need to have these behaviors instilled um, deeply. You need to eliminate blame. You need to learn to trust. Remove unplanned work. Or if there's unplanned work or work that's coming in from the side, get it visible. Get it on the board. You have to improve the flow and remove waste become cross-functional, and build autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Individuals can try more, they can experiment more, and they learn to be autonomous and empowered to share their contributions. They actually become better at failing fast. You have to create an environment that allows that. Leaders become transformed when their behaviors mirror the attitudes that they're looking for within their, their team members. <clears throat> and then organizations will transform, or teams can transform because they create bonds that allow them to respond more quickly and steer the course of where they want to go. Excuse me. Um, organizational culture exists at three levels. Um, the first level is our basic assumptions. That's the least visible to anyone. Um, those assumptions are how we build relationships with other people and how we take on the activities that we do. Um, the second is a little bit more visible, and that's the values, and that's the collective values of an organization. Um, you'll receive buy-in in a culture shift when everyone is bought into the values and helping deliver. 
And then the last, which is most visible, it's what's happening in the environment. If the environment is open, transparent, and supportive of the new behaviors, then organization, the organizational culture can occur. So Accelerate, which was written by Nicole Forsgren, Jez Humble, and Jen Keem, um, introduced us to a little bit of more about the Westrom model. Um, I had the opportunity to experience over the 13 years with Capital One, seeing the shift from power-oriented, where there's fear and there is threats, and the work is being disruptive. There's work coming from the side. I saw it transform into a little bit more of that rule-oriented, well, a highly regulated organization where you have to protect the rules and you have to do everything by the book to become a performance-oriented organization where they focused on the mission and, and used their goals to accomplish the work that they needed. They actually became better at um, being a technology company. Some of the indicators or some of the behaviors that you'll see pre-transformation in an individual is they're going to have fear, they're going to be insecure, they're going to distrust, they're, they're going to react, and they're going to be, and leaders will actually be more command and control. Post-transformation, they're led by action, they have self-confidence, they trust, they're willing to pro be proactive, and then leaders become a little bit more open in the dialogue. And teams deliver, teams um, are working towards perfection, ask permission, and follow blindly pre, but then they shift towards more experimentation and trying. And lastly, organizations move from that silo to inter-team inter, inter collaboration. They move from project delivery to product-based delivery, and they move from a release to customer. So let's get product into the customer's hands. The vehicle that we use um, at Leatrio is a dojo. So I'm going to touch a little bit on how the dojo is helping enterprises transform. In a dojo, we make connections with the individual, the team, and create that ripple across organizations. Primarily, we take coaches that are disciplined in the principles of engineering, and we help them, uh, we help our organizations um, move through the learning curve. For example, a team may need more engineering uplift, or a team may need more agile learning experience. When you pair, when you pair the coaches with a team and you create the behaviors, um, magic happens. Our dojo enables success for the individual team and organization. It creates a physical space. The physical space, we, we bring the teams away from the work that they're doing. We take them off their floor. We bring them into a protected space. Um, we offer them uh, all of the practices and methodologies that they need. Uh, we work with them for about six weeks. And then um, as they're working through that, they get the mindset and practices, and we use a hands-on reference pipeline. So when you're walking out of a dojo or you're walking out of that uplift experience, you're creating that culture. So what does a transformed culture look like? Um, to me, a transformed culture has increased collaboration, shared accountability, empowered and autonomous and resilient. What does that mean? For increased collaboration, individuals feel safe to share. They're working closer together. They're talking to each other more. And many times, they're actually seeing each other, especially if they're working from a remote destination. There's shared accountability. So um, as you remember, I talked about having a small story moving through the board. In order for that story to move through the board, you have to get it small enough and you have to share the accountability for the work to go through. It's empowered and autonomous as well as resilient. What happens in these teams, these teams will stand up for each other. So how does that happen from a dojo perspective? 
First, I'm going to hit top down. So transformation happens with the leaders and the team members. So leaders, when they change the way they use their authority, and they'll move to more of letting the uh, team members have a better freedom, for, uh, freedom to deliver the work. So in our dojo, we do two, two types of things. We bring leaders through a two-day experience. We want them to experience what it's going to be like for their teams when they walk out. So we want them to see, we teach, we inspire them, we motivate them to do the right things, and then we entrust, the, the, then we build within them the entrust to allow their teams to be empowered. One of the things that I've seen that's really powerful here is the, co the teams, the leaders, once they get to go through the dojo, we try to bring them first. When their team comes through, they get to understand. I'm going to talk about something that's kind of powerful here. The thing that we do with our dojo, um, because that culture needs to be transformed and it needs to ripple across multiple people, is we show them what it's like to do this work, we teach them how to do this work, we coach them using their work, we watch them execute and make sure it's sticking, and then they feel empowered. During the dojo, one of the activities that we do is an activity where we ask them, hey, tell us the things that are holding you back. What are those constraints? Then what we do is we invite those leaders that went through the dojo to come hear from their people in that same voice, and what happens there is that you really break the barrier of that trust that has a, this trust that may not have existed in the past, and they start removing those barriers. So change in culture will transform an enterprise. So where can you start? What could you do? I say start today. You're going to learn a lot over these next two days. So pick up something and take it back and start. The second thing I would say is find somebody else here. Find someone that you can partner with and get that individual and network with them so that you can have an ally that's going to help you move forward. The next thing is really create a collaborative and immersive way to the work that you're doing. And it's going to take time, so be willing to invest time. And last on this, um, be willing to fail. And one of the things that you're, you're going to do day in and day out trying to get that ticket moving through to production is you're going to fail. There are going to be pain points that occur, and be okay with that. But use your open and transparent conversations to talk through it and learn from it. So. Transformation done well does experience some challenges. So I want to talk just briefly on some of the challenges that we've seen. So we're teaching people to be open and work in a collaborative way. So one of the things that we see is sometimes the teams are working so close that you end up getting a little bit of infighting and a little bit of in each other's space. And you have to be OK with that. You have to work through it. And that's why we use the coaching and, the, and have coaching continually available, because when you see that and recognize it, you can jump in and make suggestions. Another thing that we see is that IT goes into it without bringing the business with them. And I really propose that we need to start business and IT together, so those leadership conversations should be with both. I highly suggest piloting. Um, pilot again, reimagine, and then pilot again. Um, you have to keep trying. Um, I had a question recently by someone that said, how do you start? Well, you find that one team that is eager to do something different and pilot with them. Create a ripple, learn from them. Find a second team, let that team pilot with them, and then eventually reimagine. The organization structure um, is slower to manifest itself, 
And that seems to be a challenge, especially when there's heavy policies and procedures in place that are slowing down the flow. And then there's another one where there's resistance to change. Um, a product owner's not wanting to be fully dedicated to the team. Um, a developer that wants to own their code and get out of my space. A tester that, that doesn't know automation. So the best thing that you can do is use the team to collaborate and work through that. Alrighty. So I'm going to bring it right back to those definitions, and hopefully you've been able to get a little sense of what it could be like to deliver one code deployed to production per day. It does take time, and I don't have the, all the easy answers, but if you start and get a firm established um, perspective on the way that you work, you create a dynamic and transmitted, transmitted culture and a thorough and dramatic transformation can occur. So maybe, like I said, it's not one code deployed to production per day. It might be to test or to dev. So last, I may not have all the answers for you today, but I have a great team of people that work with me, and I encourage you to reach out and um, ask me questions um, later on, or if you want to make a connection with someone, I can introduce you to someone on my team. Thank you.